Victoria's exit plan may be in jeopardy as COVID cases rise. Joining me live now is Victoria's Shadow Health Minister, Georgie Crozier. Georgie, thanks for your time this morning. Um, you are, of course, in the world's most locked down city, but does the reopening plan need to be delayed given the high level of cases yesterday, the higher level of cases? Well, Pete, that's right. Um, on Monday, we will be the, the longest city lockdown anywhere in the world. It's hardly a title anyone is going to be very proud of, and we've had the very harshest, harshest of restrictions. And, of course, we've been in lockdown so our health system can be prepared. That's what we've been told time and time again by the Premier. And yet our hospital system is struggling with 360-odd people in the hospital with COVID, 87 in intensive care. So we haven't had the preparation that our hospital system has needed. And the hospitals are really struggling. The doctors and nurses are really exhausted. We know that and they've done a tremendous job. But the Andrews government, um, after their promises last year of having us prepared, having 4,000 extra intensive care unit beds, and of course that needs staff, haven't come to fruition and they're not there. And there's really no excuse for this lack of preparedness by the Andrews government. So what we heard yesterday from the Premier was, yes, he wants to get us out of lockdown, but he might have to pause. So I'm not confident that we'll be coming out of lockdown. So what do you, th yeah, what do you think? What would you prefer if, if you were to make the call? Well, that's what, what I would have done a whole lot of things differently. I One thing, you know, identify the gaps. With this, so many gaps that have occurred here, our vaccine rollout has been so much slower than New South Wales. There's been this ongoing argy-bargy between the Premier and the Federal Government. It's just been shameful. Um, there's just been so many issues. We haven't been prepared for that. Uh, there's, there's the, the hot spots that haven't been identified. We didn't have people on the ground out there soon enough. So all of those issues have delayed uh, us being able to, to get out of lockdown. And, of course, yeah. we just have to... We don't know. I don't have the health advice, Pete. Sure. So I can't, I can't sort of, you know, determine what the government knows because they've got that health advice. They've got the modelling. Yeah. All we see are that... Daily numbers and they're rising. They're going much. The trajectory is much faster. Miles. And with the lack of preparedness, it doesn't look good for Victoria. Yeah, but 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 based on those numbers, would you be comfortable with easing restrictions anytime soon? Well, we've got, as I said, you know, there's over 300 people in hospital now, 87 in intensive care or thereabouts. Um, let's hope those numbers plateau. I mean, we have to see what will happen over the coming days. Uh, 1,400 cases. I'm hearing rumours this morning that those numbers are down to around 1,100. I heard that on radio this morning. Uh, so if we've peaked at 1,400, we should be able to manage that. I mean, we're, we're, the, the government has no excuse for not preparing us. They promised us 18 months. They've had 18 months to prepare our system. And we have been in lockdown, the longest city anywhere in the world. So we, we just... It's extraordinary that we're in this predicament because of the lack of planning and the lack of preparation by the Andrews government, I think it's it's really shameful. And there are other impacts, of course, people with non-COVID conditions who are going to be suffering uh, and mental health impacts on our kids down in Victoria is just massive. The economic fallout is just, just really taking hold now. We've had it in lockdown two, but this lockdown six is really demonstrating the, the, the impact to so many businesses. So we've got those impacts as well. And really, you know, where's that consideration being taken into the preparation by the Andrews government? You've also got the situation. You've also got the situation of, of non-COVID patients at the moment, and there's been a discussion paper that's been drawn up by health officials that reveals that because of COVID, low priority situations are becoming life-threatening emergencies. Routine treatments are having to be deferred. That's quite alarming for what's around the corner when you've got these higher caseloads, isn't it? And you know, the higher case numbers doesn't mean everyone's going to hospital. In New South Wales, it was about 10%. I'm not precisely sure where it's at in Victoria at the moment, but that is alarming of what's around the corner anyway. Oh, most definitely, Pete. That, uh, don't, don't forget, uh, there was record numbers of people waiting on the elective surgery wait list before the suspension of surgeries in early uh, March last year. So we've had this health crisis for years, and we've had Daniel Andrews as the health minister and premier uh, of 11 of the last 15 years. So this is a lack of investment by the uh, former, you know, former government and and current government. We've been under stress. And as you say, it's the non-COVID patients who are going to have their surgeries delayed, their 
conditions will worsen. And I think that's what doctors are very concerned yeah. about, are those non-COVID patients who are going to have worse health outcomes as a result you've also of what got, we're seeing today. George, you've also got your big and crucial outlets such as Woolworths that are being understaffed at the moment too. So on the flip side of that, on the other side of the coin, I should say, do, do, do you need to ease isolation rules? Well, we've got to have, you know, food supply. We've got to have that. And there's right. been this furloughing of staff every time somebody, you know, goes to a tier one site, you're automatically locked in your home for 14 days. There's got to be some sensible common sense approach. And that's why I've been calling on rapid testing. Rapid testing is a screening tool. It's been used around the world to manage COVID. It should have been rolled out in Victoria. The Premier has been dismissing of this. It's just extraordinary. It is being used in some hospitals and workplaces now, which I'm pleased to see. But we need to use those tools so that we can manage this. We can't have major um, supermarket lines shut down and people not accessing groceries. It's, it's, it's very difficult now. So many of those essential services in health we've seen are being caught out because of uh, staff being having to be furloughed. And that's GP surgeries, it's hospitals, it's it's other health services as well, Pete. Georgie Crozier, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.